This is absolutely the best bass fishing technique that you will ever find to catch big bass and numbers of bass. Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now, before we hop into this video here, it is something that I've been thinking about for a very, very long time. And I'm gonna draw some lines between some specific anglers and specific things they're doing. Uh, and I, I might shed some light on the situation here. Now, before I get going, uh, I don't wanna shortchange any of these anglers. They're all amazing anglers. I'm not calling them out for anything. They are just doing something that I have thought for a long time to be one of the most effective techniques and best ways to fish, to catch a lot of fish and also some giant fish. We're gonna go ahead and hop into the video here. Stay tuned guys, this one's gonna be a good one. All right, back on this guy here. So uh, if you crappie fish or you do any crappie fishing, I'm sure you know what these baits are right here. Uh, these Bobby Garland little minnow style baits are super effective for crappie. Now, why am I saying that this stuff right here is the best lure to catch bass on right now? Well, maybe not the lure, but probably the technique. You know, crappie fishing has been around forever. Uh, people love to eat crappie. Crappie are fun. They're an awesome game fish. Uh, they, can, they can be very aggressive and they can be very not aggressive if you've crappie fished a lot. Uh, a lot of the times, you know, crappie, I feel like they change even more than bass change. You know, a crappie bite can change within, uh, I mean, minutes of each other. If you mess up a spot, you run the trolling motor the wrong way, you, you fall down in the boat and make a lot of noise, these crappie are gonna spook extremely, extremely fast. Now, the way I see bass, I just think they're dumb crappie, to be honest. And, you know, I've had this thought for such a long time, and one of my favorite anglers on tour right now, Jacob Wheeler, just proved one of my theories here. Um, another one is Josh Jones. Another one is going to be Jeff Gustafson, Gussie. Uh, and, you know, what do all three of these anglers have in common? They are basically crappie fishing for bass. Is this what bass fishing's coming to? Uh, are we all just gonna become basically crappie anglers throwing just about the same lures, throwing the same techniques? Now, before I get into that, you know, fishing technology has come a long way. Forward-facing sonar has absolutely changed the game for anglers of any, any kind. You know, bass fishermen take a uh, huge advantage of this forward-facing sonar. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I love my Garmin Live Scope. I love going out there, breaking down the water super fast because of the live imaging capabilities. I am now able to tell if a catfish, a carp, a gar is swimming however far away from me, up to around 100 foot for me, I still have an LVS 32, but I can easily break down so much water. I can turn my trolling motor on 10, cruise around and cover a large portion of water. So I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have. Um, you know, Randy Blockett has his thoughts on it. I can agree with Randy on some things, but I think uh, forward-facing sonar is one of those tools. It's just a tool for me uh, to break down water and fish a little more effectively. Okay, so back on the anglers. Jacob Wheeler, Gussie, and Josh Jones. Josh Jones is a big bass trophy angler. Uh, he got his start in Oklahoma fishing for crappie with the Garmin Live Scope. He now uses Lorentz Active Target, but that doesn't re really make any difference to me. It's still forward-facing sonar. Uh, you know, next up, Jeff Gustafson. He won the most recent Bassmasters Classic on a uh, technique called moping, or also referred to as a Demiki rig here in the States. Now, Jacob Wheeler, just won the major league fishing event out at Gunnersville on a brand new bait that he's developing with Rapala, uh, basically a Demiki rig. So all these baits here, I'm gonna call them basically bigger crappie jigs. And that's where this comes into play, guys. You know, a bigger crappie jig is all they're doing to catch these bass. Jacob Wheeler caught some absolute giant ones on what he calls the freeloader from Rapala, which, you know, I'm very excited to get here in the shop. Uh, and really all they're doing is they're pitching it out to these fish or casting out at these fish with forward-facing sonar, leaving it right above their heads. Now, if you haven't seen any footage or played around with forward-facing sonar or done what Josh Jones is doing with the swim jig here, you need to give it a try. If you haven't, um, definitely look on YouTube for some footage of people that do do it because it's basically crappie fishing. So what they're doing here, imagine, let's take, let me, let me take this here. Imagine this 6XD as a bass. Now, um, I've done this technique a whole bunch, especially this winter after it became super, super popular. Imagine the 6XD as a bass, guys. 
So all the anglers are doing with these techniques, the baits, the, uh, um, the Z-Man uh, jerk shads or a streaks, a swim jig, a Demiki rig, kind of like a Demiki armor shad or the freeloader, they're taking these baits and it, let's say the angler's over here on this side, cast out. So this bait here is gonna be going down to that fish and they put it right above its head and that fish is gonna start, go straight after it right here or they're gonna work it up away from that fish and that fish is gonna chase it like that. That is the exact same behavior that crappie do when you're fishing vertical on a brush pile. So again, let's take this bait here, the 6XD. It's a crappie sitting in a brush pile. You drop your little jig down, keep it above its head, and that crappie is gonna rise up. I'm sure if you watch crappie footage, these crappie always rise up. And the biggest thing, the biggest rule in all of crappie and bass fishing, most of the time, if you're doing, the, if you're doing these techniques, the biggest rule, keep your bait above their head and keep that fish moving. Because whenever that fish moves, it's interested and you wanna keep it interested, keep it going up. These techniques here weren't fully developed because of bass fishing. These techniques here, why they're catching so many fish, so many big fish and targeting so many big fish, AKA Josh Jones with this guy here. Um, actually, sorry, this is just a regular divine swim jig. Y'all bought us out of the braid swim jigs and we haven't gotten any more. But to the point, basically they're targeting these fish with this technique here to key in on the fish's natural instinct to be curious and chase something that looks like food. You know, something that's very slow moving like a crappie jig just floating down or a swim jig right in front of its face. It's an easy target. The fish doesn't have to expend a lot of energy to chase it. And that's one of the big things. You know, the big keys are easy meal. Uh, is it in the relative area that that fish can sense it? You know, forward facing sonar too. Garmin has the biggest beam width out of any of them. You know, Lawrence active target and hummingbird uh, you know, mega live, their beams are a little bit smaller, a little bit more precise. So you still have to have a great deal of skill to, you know, hone in exactly on these fish. And, you know, these anglers that have forward facing sonar and are using them really effectively to target fish are definitely taking full advantage of it and winning a whole lot more money in these big tournaments. So I hope that kind of clears up how I started and we make a full circle back to the crappie guys. Um, but all it is, if you wanna go out there and really target, learn your electronics, target these fish, definitely try crappie fishing. That is how I personally um, got so good with Garmin LiveScope or forward facing sonar in general, um, crappie fishing. I literally pull up to a brush pile, see some crappie down there, or bluegill even, I've done it with bluegill, um, drop a little crappie jig down there. If you wanna get better at forward facing sonar, learn how these fish react and move to certain stimuli in their area. There's always gonna be, this is very important. Let me put those baits down so I can explain this properly. There's always going to be a certain range that that fish is going to be attracted to. So if a fish is sitting in really, really clear water, you might only have to bring your jig down around three foot away from it, as opposed to dirtier water, you're gonna have to put that jig much closer to it. And this translates from crappie to bass. Crappie are gonna be vertical, bass are gonna be more horizontal in my opinion. You're still gonna have to do a little vertical play depending on how clear that water is. Like OH Ivy, I've heard that people are putting their uh, A rigs or um, swim jigs or something around four foot above that fish. Uh, and as it goes by it, that fish has to chase it. Now, obviously with a bigger bait, you're gonna have to get it um, a little farther away just because of the presence. And you wanna make sure you don't overstimulate that bass because no bait fish or a group of bait fish is going to come extremely close to that fish. And the fish are learning that. They, they know um, that bait fish aren't supposed to be going straight at them. So that is one big thing. You wanna keep your bait far enough away depending on the water clarity. You know, if you've got blades on your umbrella rig, if you're doing that in the winter time, if you've got blades on your umbrella rig, those fish can feel the pulses. You have to go a little bit farther away. I'm sure I could build a whole chart based on how many baits you have on it, blades, how big the blades are, uh, what color the blades are, uh, and basically tell you exactly how far away you need your bait to be. You know, if it's a little tiny crappie jig, you can put it right on its head and it's gonna sit there and that fish is just gonna open its mouth and eat it because it's right there. It's not a big presence. It doesn't seem that unrealistic. So uh, I hope this video just kind of opened your mind 
to what you can do with forward-facing sonar. And if you don't have it, I would definitely give it a try. This isn't a plug for selling electronics. We don't sell electronics here at Lake Pro Tackle, but if you aren't interested, hit us up down in the comments section. If you've experienced some of this for yourself, let us know how it's gone for you. But you know, all these anglers guys, they're just going crappy fishing. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time at Lake Pro Tackle.